this video uh, that I'm putting together is uh, called 2012, the Cultist Olympics, Fire Rituals and the Alien Invasion. Um, a number of months ago, um, I was watching the um, Olympic torch being carried around Great Britain. And uh, I Skyped a, a friend, colleague of mine in Canada who had been brought up in the um, American or Canadian Indian uh, ways. And I was asking him about these, uh, his interpretation of the fire ceremony and, uh, you know, what it could be used for. Now, his understanding of it was a one of a purification of the land and things like that. And I don't uh, think that he was from uh, an occultist background as, as such. Um, only ever done it in, in sincerity. But he said to me just to keep an eye on what was going on. Um, and obviously I have over the months since the Olympic torch has uh, been in Great Britain. And I found it uh, rather disturbing what the the uh, BBC were delivering every day, and the amount of footage on it. And uh, I found it rather strange. You know, it was whipped up um, beyond uh, beyond any logic. And um, I did a search, and you can see the image here now. Um, uh, this is when the Olympic uh, flame was first lit, um, before it came to Great Britain. And uh, the Guardian covers, I think it's the Guardian, uh, covers this. And so this is what they they wrote about the ceremony of, uh, of lighting the Olympic uh, torch. It was a majestic moment, the clouds came out and then they went back in. Between this, uh, in the moment, Ino Mengaki, uh, I don't know whether I pronounced that right, the highest of high priestesses gathered before the great stone altar of the Temple of Hera. Now we have a high priestess in the Temple of Hera. So, to me, this is now looking as a I know this is the way that the Olympics have always been started. They seem to have been started for a long time. Uh, but it seems to me to be pretty pretty odd. You have a high priestess and you have an altar. And, uh, the son of Hera was Ares, uh, the Greek god of war. Uh, one of the twelve uh, 12 Olympians. So, it, it, you know, you can understand that the Olympics are, uh, you know, starting in Greece. And you can understand that maybe this is, this is nothing more than uh, just a dot too far of me looking at this fire ritual and saying, well, you know, there's a high priestess, there's an altar, there's, you know, everything that your coldest will have. Um... But maybe, just maybe, it's uh, an overactive mind uh, joining some dots that uh, really didn't deserve to be joined together. So in that uh, <coughs> in that article, um, uh, Lord Co. Uh, uh, there's a quote from Lord Co. Now it's probably a misquote because it uh, doesn't doesn't. Uh, doesn't hold up to be honest he told the cl the crowd with th the flame was a great connector between the ancient games and the modern games cities towns villages across Greece and Britain you know we got the, we got the death of Greece and, and perhaps we got the the birth of Britain if um uh, I'll talk about that later in the talk so the the thing that I found strange that uh uh, Lord Coe or Sebastian Coe, uh, as I remember him, um, 
he is quoted as saying, now whether the Guardian have got this wrong, after 5,000 years, the Greeks are good at this sort of thing. Now, the exact origins of the games are shrouded in myth and legend, but records indicate they began at 776. So we're talking of 2,000 years, so 2,500 years, not 5,000. The only thing that, um, that sort of jumps out of me of uh, this 5,000 years is uh, the length of uh, a Mayan cycle, or a Yuga, or a Yuga cycle, whatever you uh, However, however you would see it, and so this, you know, was a was a little bit confusing to me in in lots of ways. You know, I know I'm rambling a bit. I mean, they've visited many, 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 many parts of the country, and again, I uh, I did a search on it, and I mean, I didn't really need to because I, you know, been force fed it for for weeks. Turned up 152 million uh, results, and. Um, you know, we had our superstars, Beckham, children, uh, people in disabled in wheelchairs, you know, going around the streets. And, um, you know, in the, even in that image I put up for this video, you know, you've got three nymph virgin, vestal virgins, like lighting torches uh, in Greece. So, you know, there, there is a bit of symbology going on here that, um, that, is, that to me, looks very occultist. But... You know, it, uh, because it's come from from it, the ancient Olympics itself, maybe you would expect that anyway. So, you know, it's nothing. Um, but I had to laugh, you know, if it has got an occultist background, which, which of late I, I, I probably think that it has, um, I had to, had to laugh that, that uh, the Olympic torch has gone out so many times. I mean, it's been lashed by rain. And to me, it was uh, very funny. It was like a, you know, like the Earth consciousness, or the having to go back at the wackos. Um, but again, you know, it uh, it may be just the the delusions of a a person who um, who was trying to answer whether there was an occult um, tie in to this uh, to this this Olympic Games. Uh, so what I did is uh, I just did a simple search, and. Uh, in that search, it turned up two million results, um, and some very, very interesting uh, details. In the Zion image came up. Uh, Ian Crane talks of that, and I found that pretty funny that uh, Ian Crane's in Abbeville tomorrow, and uh, I'll probably go and see him because I've never ever come across him in any shape or form. So this week I've watched two or three of his videos, and it's very, very interesting. Uh, so now the dots are, you know, are being filled in by, you know, various different people who are, you know, saying, well, you know, there is an occultist tie into the uh, Olympic Games, and it isn't just as simple as as what you would look on the surface. Again, all generated by me looking at the Olympic torch and, and looking at it and thinking, well, what the bloody hell is this fuss about? You know, why are we being forced force fed this? So I decided to, obviously not getting, um, although uh, my friend Neil uh, was kind in offering his uh, understanding of the rituals of fire, um, that came from a person who was doing it in good intentions. Um, the fire ceremony was a purification ceremony in, in his eyes, but he did, you know, as I said, he, he told me to, to, to uh, just keep an eye on it. So I did some digging around, and the the new fire ceremony uh, was uh, Aztec ceremony performed. Uh, you know, so we each culture has a different one. You know, each culture has a fire ceremony of purification or whatever. Uh, the occultists use it in a different way. So there's different ways of uh, viewing it. But I'm I'm gonna uh, just uh, because Co uh, uh, Sebastian Coe was referencing the five thousand year cycle. Um, Aztec and Mayan being very close together in, in terms of um, uh, buildings and, and location. I thought it was strange, so I thought, well, I'll take a, a view on the Mayan one and just have a look at it. So it's uh, performed every, you know, 52 years. 
uh, what's interesting is in order to stave off the end of the world and with us in 2012 and everyone's saying oh it's going to end but you know of course it's not but you know uh, I found it funny that uh, it's uh, in order to, st- uh, to stop the end of the world uh, occurring the celebrations of the new fire ceremony is described by uh, Sahangan um during the last five days now these these days are interesting as, as well they have a five day fire ceremony of the last year of the cycle preparations for ceremony began these preparations in, in involved um, abstinence from work fasting ritual uh bloodletting so there's a blood sacrifice uh, you know the Mayans were pretty good at that and the Aztecs uh, loved a little bit of um cutting people's hearts up uh my and oh, obviously uh you know, this is the corruption. This is the corruption of the age. To be honest, uh, it's nothing to do with the minds personally. Um, and uh, when the constellation, uh, I think it was the Orion, they called it the fire drill, rose above the horizon. Uh, horizon. A man, man was sacrificed on the top of the pyramid. Um, when the first um, the first sparks uh, sprung from the fire drill, the new calendar realm was declared. Now this is interesting, um, and a huge bonfire was lit. So, so we have the f- we have the fire, the bonfire, we have the sacrifice, um, and uh, we have Sevco talk talking about the the five thousand years rather than the two thousand years. So, whether that's just uh, just an error by the paper who misquoted him or what. What was interesting is the way they light the torch. Uh, uh, what they will do is uh, they will um, uh, they've got a uh, parabolic uh, mirror in a lens, and uh, it's symbolised as so the sun hits that uh, parabolic mirror, uh, which lights the torch. So it's the bringing down of the sun to light the frame for the fire for the olympic flame now in ancient mythology anything the sun touched turned to gold and so we have the gold um olympic torch you know so again you know you can say well these are dots that don't deserve to be put together and uh, they have no right together but they're just uncanny that uh, you know, perhaps they've always been gold. You know, gold is re- represented in the the highest medal, uh, bronze, silver, gold. So there could be just nothing in it. There could be just that the gold being the most precious metal. Therefore, the the torch is going to be in gold. Um, but the sun lighting it and bringing it down, the Mayans in, into uh, the sun cycles. You know, gives a little bit of credibility that it's all maybe maybe all linked together. So, in witchcraft, they use this. Uh, so, to go, go into the you know, the ways that the fire ceremony is used, they use candles. They put them in pentagrams. They cast the, their spells. They spell it out into into a into a sealed uh, area. So, it's whether it's a square or one of the pentacles or whatever, they'll throw their their spell into that into that and light in their candle. So, so um. This ritual magic around the fire is uh, very interesting. Um, I was listening to the news and uh, I realised that there was a second uh, fire ritual going on whilst the Olympic torch was travelling around Great Britain. And uh, I decided to have a look to see if there were any other fire ceremonies um going on and uh i turned up with uh uh a fire ceremony which was um starting on the 20th of july which is one of the ritualistic dates uh this fire ceremony is uh by a french uh, being held by a, or being put together by a french um, alchemist so he's obviously somewhat into the occult called Carabos now um, I was a little bit taken back by this because I didn't want to see crap like this you know Um, I'm a man of compassion and love and 
you know, these fire ceremonies, uh, you know, were, you know, again, you know, not, not that I'm con overly concerned about anything, but, uh, you know, they're just a little bit annoying that people want to, want to use this ritual fire, and, uh, there's a ceremony called the cremation of care where they have the sacrifice. Well, obviously I've talked about that. You know, they they, they do the fake the the, the fake sacrifice. Um, I think it's Bohemian Grove, but um, you know the Aztecs would uh, would sacrifice it and light the fires, and light their beacons, and so we have um, you know a secondary fire s ceremony. Um, you know, they want uh, children to participate in it or whatever. Um, you know, it may be, you know, again, I'm just jo uh, joining too many dots together. So I was digging around and came across a website, uh, so I'll quote it. Um, j uh, you know, obviously I don't know the, the intentions of this individual as, as, as such, but all I'm quoting it for is the the Prince, Prince William, although... Um, uh, has been to one of these fire rituals by Carabos. So, just so no one can, and this is his quote from uh, the new Spaceman uh, blog spot. Just so no one can accuse me of any religious bigotry, the regular readers will know my pre preoccupation with Prince William and the forthcoming Luciferium light bringing role, all roped into the Stone of Destiny in Edinburgh. So we have these altars and stones kicking around in everything. Uh, tying in well to Uma, Uma's underpants. I think that's uh, just a tongue-in-cheek quote. At last, we, last we saw the confirmation of the forthcoming tragedy for human as, as an event branded the Lo Light Night, conducted by French and this is the alchemist Carabos in in the hi historic Royal Mile. Now, some bad fortune has, has been hitting these fire ceremonies, right? Because it went wrong. Sparks were flying, burning braziers into the crowd. And there's a little image of uh, what uh, the fire brigade were caught. So, you know, they've had the Olympic frame put out. And if these things are, are linked, you know, then their fire ceremonies are going wrong. Uh, it's just it, it's just very, to me, very interesting that... Um, you know these things seem to be uh, occurring, but it is on an occultist uh, ceremonial date of the twentieth. Uh, the fire ceremonies only go for a couple of days, um, which uh, the Mayans and the Aztecs held a five-day fire ceremony. Um, the other thing that um, disturbed me about, uh, you know, I, 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 again, it's not not disturbed as such, but I found strange more than anything else. It's like, you know, what is the location of Milton Keynes? And uh, I had a little bit of information which goes back to 2006. Uh, I'll research into the old bar wave, uh, the particles of creation. Um, you know, uh, well, they recently announced that they found the God particle, but what they will find is that particle is a particle and a wave. Uh, and it behaves like the old bar wave that uh, we've been researching. But during those talks that we were given, and we, we started from 2004 uh, to 2006 maybe, and uh, we met a number of um, Wiccans, witches, occultists. Um, all, all nice people, you know. Um, we went to a Wick, Wicker, Wiccan uh, wedding. Um, but we weren't, you know, we were very much out of, uh, not not into personal power. Uh, we were just researching the energy and uh, we used it for healing. That was, uh, we didn't... Uh, uh, we treated it mainly as an uh, exercise of reducing our own egos. Uh, most people who cast spells cast them out of ego. Uh, and that is the thing to be avoided. But we were invited. Um, and it was seen as... Uh, I, t I take it that it was a, a realistic invite. And I, I don't believe that the person was uh, misleading me in any way. To the High Priestess of uh, Great Britain. Now, if this is true, 
the High Priestess of Great Britain, um, was in Milton Keynes, which I found particularly odd and didn't understand it. So this fire ceremony taking place in Milton Keynes, you know, with this High Priestess starting the Olympics, um, got me a little bit uh, like confused. You know, I'm thinking, well. You know, how do all these uh, synchronistic events just come together? You know, this this was, uh, this information was, you know, with this invite was given to us in 2006. Again, as I say, we declined it. And so I had a look at um, looking for the High Priestess and it came up with a Vivian Crowley. She was linked to the Masonic uh, or some of the, the Brickett Brickett wood, uh, wood Coven, which was a naturist... Uh, society that was set up and um you know but it didn't actually uh tie us into um, what i was looking for which was the milton king's uh tie-in so but you know if that invite was to be true um uh then you know this high priestess will probably participate in this uh ritual ceremony uh, it's on the ritualistic date of uh, 20, uh, 20th of July. What also was interesting with this uh, Milton Keynes Festival is they were bringing an inflatable, no, this is, I mean, inflatable bouncy castle of Stonehenge. So what they were doing is, in, in symbolic terms, is moving one of the high energy centers, if you if you believe the pagans, the high energy centers, and I believe that they are magnetic centers, uh, uh, taking it to Milton Keynes, you know, as a, as a symbolic thing. Um, and then I, uh, I was watching the Olympic opening ceremony video because obviously by this time now I I wanted to have a look at it all. I was thinking, well, what on earth is going on? And uh, in the opening ceremony they've got they talk of a, a, a spirit, the spiritual centre of Glastonbury. So let's retrack a bit. So we've got Zion, you know, this Zion logo. Um, you know, we've got these fire ceremonies. Uh, we've got an odd fire ceremony, um, you know, taking place in Milton Keynes, which may or may not be connected. Um, we've got Stonehenge being brought to Milton Keynes, and we've got Glastonbury being brought to London in, in symbolic terms. So, you know, you know, the High Priestess of Great Britain, if that invite was true, was from Milton Keynes. I mean, it was, it, again, it's it's a very odd group of um, coincidences uh, to me. Dots that maybe shouldn't be joined together, maybe should be. What I found interesting is that um, on the top of Glastonbury, they didn't put the hawthorn that uh, flowers at Christmas and then I think it flowers twice a year, which is a very unusual hawthorn tree. And there are some uh, links to uh, Joseph of Arimathea visiting there uh, with the young Jesus. Um, but of course, they, they decided to put an oak on there, which is another one of the pagan occultist symbols. You could say, oh well, British oak, you know, it's one of the indigenous trees of Britain, why wouldn't you put it on top of Glastonbury, even if there isn't one there, you know, even if it is a hawthorn, which is equally as unusual, because it flowers twice a year. And of course, then, uh, reading some of the mythology about the oak in terms of um, the Wiccans, uh, it loses its leaves in midwinter, so it's a solstice, a winter solstice tree, and it's also a summer solstice tree. And they talk about you can hide under the leaves, it protects you from the sun, and it's a place to keep things hidden under the oak tree. So, uh, under the mound, you know, is it just telling us that we are, we are delivering, you know, for a spell to work, they have to spell it out and then hide it. You know, so people don't actually, you know, notice what's really going on. And so, uh, you know, we have this very confusing set of things, you know, that um, 
may or may not be connected. I personally think that there's a little bit too much coincidence going on here. And so I uh, did a search on um, on uh, uh, ritualistic dates and we came up with the Grand Climax. Uh, this is a festival which starts from the 20th through to the 27th. So it isn't the five days of the fire ceremony. Um, but the the Milton Keynes one was starting on the 20th. And the cl grand climax of the Olympics Open was on the 27th of July. You know, it talks about the date varying uh, annually, five weeks, one day after the summer solstice. Uh, abduction ceremony, ceremony and preparation, holding and sacrificing. So they they they, they abduct something, maybe a sheep or a goat or whatever, um, and they hold it until Lamnus Day, and then they sacrifice it on Lamnus Day, um, which is a blood ritual, an animal or human sacrifice. So we could have our alien invasion or whatever, or people being murdered. Um, you know, as 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 this stuff leaks out. Um, let's hope that none of this is happening, and let's just hope that uh, I am absolutely and totally dot dot in wrong eyes and T's and all sorts of things. Uh, because um, you know, if it is true, then it's uh, rather sinister and you know not very palatable, and it's a shame for the people who are participating in it if it is real. So we have the Zion, we have the you know the pro promised land or whatever. We have the Glastonbury Thorn, uh, Joseph of Arimathea visiting it. So now we've got this place where Jesus is said to have visited, coming into London. I mean, you know, the whole thing of this is uh, we have a promised land, we have the place that Jesus is said to have visited um, in the opening. And uh, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, well, there's something going on here, but uh, I can't put my finger on it. Earlier on in this talk... Uh, uh, I talked about um, uh, the Aztecs lighting beacons, and I also talked about two fire ceremonies that I was uh, that I was aware of at that time, and this was the thing that was causing me to get a little bit confused. And um, the Queen, no, I, I couldn't get any um, understanding of the fourth four thousand two hundred beacons. Or it's been quoted at different numbers actually, four thousand two hundred fifty jubilee beacons. 4,200. Um, but the beacons, uh, uh, for uh, for anyone who didn't know the, the ancient... Um, so the Queen has been lighting these for her jubilee. And this was done before in, in other jubilees anyway. So it's not uncommon for that to occur. So you could say, again, it's another, another thing. But the beacon was lit to warn of uh, an invasion. And, um, you know, and this is where everything gets, like, it gets, like, really strange, you know, because you think, well, well, the beacons now we've lit, we, we warned everyone that there's a, the, the ritualistic fire ceremonies going on all over the place. And, um, yeah, <laughs> I'd come across on the, the, the cultist um, search back that I talked about earlier in the, in the talk. Um... The people thought that there was going to be an alien invasion. And so the beacons have already been lit for us to warn us that that is an invasion. And this to me now is like, um, uh, it makes for a good story. Perhaps we should produce a film by it because it's like really fanciful. Um, the elements are against, uh, if this is the case, the elements are against them. Um, their fire ceremonies have gone out of control. Uh, the Olympic torch has been put out, so uh, I think that uh, uh, whatever forces they think they can work with, if it is even happening, are not working with them anymore. Um, this is why the time of change that uh, I believe in is occurring. Uh, we're going through a transition. Uh, the pole power bases are crumbling. Uh, but it could be just a just a wacko uh, putting some videos together. So there's uh, there's uh, an interesting video of um, cartoon spaceships, and this was done in 2008, I think it was, uh, to promote the Olympics with uh, spaceships. 
And of course, Ian Crane talks about spaceships over the other Olympics as well. It was a closing in one of the closing ceremonies where people actually thought, that, "Now, what alien spaceships are doing in Olympics? I don't know. I mean, why are they even? You know, I don't know why aliens would participate in the Olympic festival." And so we, um, you know, again with all these searches, I came up with a with another Guardian. Um, article which which it's it starts with on the on the 2012 olympics part of a plot to take over the world uh some people believe that a, an elite elite group of people will use the games to simulate an alien invasion so we have the beacons le- ready for this invasion in a plan for global dominance the basic scenario goes something like this while the world's eyes are on london 2012 a spect- this is the guardian now not me um, a spectacular alien invasion would take place at the Olympic Stadium, or so the public will think. It will actually be a hoax inv- invasion orchestrated by the New World Order, so as an excuse for a st- uh, stage of a global coup. Terrified by the appearance of alien, the world populace will surrender the civil li- liberties, uh, and they, a vague er- er- of, of elites such as the Bilderberg, Freemasons, Illuminati, dynasties such as the Royal English families, uh, the Rockefellers, Rothschild, will have smoothly achieved their goal of a single world government and an economy, uh, economy and religion. Um, he was obviously writing that as a tongue-in-cheek article. But of course, you know, we have uh, all these sort of dots now suddenly forming a some sort of cohesive idea, you know, we have the beacons land, we have an invasion, where's the invasion coming? Britain's not going to be invaded by anybody. You know, um, you know, unless we get some sort of, you know, terrorist, you know, I mean, nobody want, nobody would want to take on Britain. You know, not with the, with the association with us with America, I mean, it would be suicide. Uh, so we could just be a jubilee thing of lighting little beacons and Anyone who knows any occultist numbers, if they recognise 4,250 or 4,200 or whatever, um, maybe they'd want to post on the bottom of this video. Uh, so we have um, various... Uh, uh, the idea of the alien invasion. But I go back to the, the serious nature of why I bothered to post this. It's uh, mainly because of my research into the old barway theory and the science that goes with that. Uh, what we have here is uh, a depiction from 1710, which was at the end of the uh, more the minimum. Uh, I don't want to talk too much about how these um, light events occur in so at the end tail ends of solar minimums. Um, Hutchinson of the Hutchinson effect has been created, in, and I've written to him a number of occasions, or written on one or two occasions, um, because he was creating like magnetic mists using Tesla coils. And what we have here in um, uh, so there's an increase in 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 the magnetics of the Earth after the end of the solar minimum. What we have here is depicted in a 1710 uh, piece of artwork. Is what everyone thinks is a UFO. Uh, it has four strands, like the orb that I photographed. It's part of our data set. And so, if any of this event is orchestrated by um, using Tesla Tesla coils or increased increased um, magnetic events, they could probably stimulate and illuminate this uh, particle effect. So, if you do manage to see this in the skies, I've been warning people that uh, it will be seen at the end of the solar minimum anyway. And I find it funny that uh, a lot of people are, you know, are talking about this alien invasion. Um, there are ways to manipulate the energetic field of the Earth to create these things. And uh, as I say, Hutchinson of the Hutchinson effect has, has created magnetic mists, and I believe orb spheres as well by using Tesla coils. And so the history of the universe, um, uh, this is the 96%, which is somewhat unknown, although they've recently declared they found the Higgs boson uh, yesterday or today, or probably have. Uh, that will turn out to be a particle and a wave. Uh, 
um, as I've been predicting on many occasions there are a number of things that I have predicted and so what we have is uh, in real terms is a biological universe uh, so if we see any of this stuff don't don't think it to be aliens in, in spaceships uh, I thought I'd post up some of the latest research at the tail end of this uh, the, the Ometica states and as above so below and uh, those images endorse that understanding. Um, the first one is a fiber bus. It's under. It's of 10 microns uh, wide, and the other one is taken upon a pretty common, and it's probably about two to three feet wide. Although I, you know, there's no way of truly scaling these uh, massless particles. All I know is that they they are at distance from the lens, and we've proved that through the science. These are some of the uh, energy exchanges that uh, that uh, the old bar wave will be seen. So if you see any uh, rods or bars um, flying in the sky, just remember it's a biological universe. It part, forms part of the old bar wave and it's nothing to do with an alien invasion. As for the Olympics, it will be nice to see what occurs on the day, um, the second, and what occurs generally throughout this Olympics. Um, it'll be interesting. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.